impulse in two dimensions. By now you have seen plenty of situations where something was moving along with a certain momentum. For example, I have this funky race car and if I drive very fast in it, I will have a large momentum. You should be aware that momentum is a vector, which means its direction matters. Now an impulse is a change in momentum. How do you change the momentum of a car? You go faster. Because momentum is mass times velocity, an increase in velocity corresponds to an increase in momentum. The final minus initial momentum gives you the impulse that acts. Because momentum is a vector, impulse is also described by a vector. It is found by subtracting the initial momentum from the final, so you have to subtract two vectors to find it. How do we subtract vectors again? First, we take the initial momentum arrow and flip it around, so we get negative p initial. Then, add it to the final momentum. You put the arrows together like this, with the tip of one on the tail end of the other. Finally, you draw the resultant like this, and that's your change in momentum. Just remember, impulse still has units. It's measured in newton seconds, or kilogram meters per second. Let's look at an example. Consider a ball bouncing off a flat wooden table. Here's my ball, very flamboyantly colored. I'm going to launch it at a table and see what happens. Before it hit the table, the ball had a certain momentum. Let's say that immediately after it bounces, the ball has the same uh, size of momentum but in a different direction. By the way, bouncy balls don't always behave like this in real life. This diagram is an approximation, similar to what you may get in an exam question. If you take those momentum vectors and subtract them, you find a large impulse on the ball. Notice the direction, it's straight up at right angles to the surface of the table. This makes sense because the impulse is proportional to the reaction force that pushes the ball back up. Of course, it's the table itself that provides that force. Again, this kind of ideal situation is typical of an exam style question on momentum. If you recall Newton's laws, the third law says that forces always come in pairs. There is an equal and opposite force from the ball on the table, which is directed downward. Here's something for you to think about. If the same size of force acts on both objects, why doesn't the table start bouncing around like the ball does? Anyway, I hope you found this presentation helpful in your study of impulse. Thanks for watching.